Universal Studios began in uh, 1912. Our founder was a European named Carl Lemley, a German in fact. He began what was then known as the Universal Film Manufacturing Company in 1912 in New York City. New York City. Yes, New York City. Thank you for picking up your cue. Your cue, Tony. That's great. The entire American movie industry began on the east coast of the United States. Bit by bit, everybody came west, including our founder, Mr. Mudley. In 1914, he bought 200 acres of California real estate and began Universal City Studios. That's our metropolitan area over there. Big city area. You may be wondering, which big city? Well, any big city. I mean, you get to pick it. Coming up on your left. You're going to see the Mobile Lab or InGen Center, as it was known, from Lost World Jurassic Park. That thing got pushed off a cliff by the T-Rex. Trapped inside, Julianne Moore, Jeff Goldblum, and Vince Vaughn, a very early film appearance for him. Easy to knock that thing around, by the way, because that whole vehicle is built on a plywood. Oh, no, wait a minute, dinosaurs, they're going to attack again. Everybody's up! Woo! Ah! Oh, and you thought that was bad? Wait for the fire hose coming out of the mouth of the dinosaur on the left-hand side. Get ready to duck! No, it's not going to happen. I'm kidding. <laughs> Way back to the start of the movie industry a hundred years ago, is that you can recreate different parts of the world right here at the studio. California is blessed. Our geography has been made to look like any place in the world. And so on studio backlots, they did that. We're going to take you to Mexico right now. This is also a good place for a weather effect demonstration. You see, uh, sometimes you script calls uh, for a scene with the bad weather, right? Well, this is California. You can't afford to sit around waiting for it to rain or snow. So you make your own bad weather in Hollywood. I'll show you how. That rain comes from sprinklers at the top of the frozen pole. Now, the sprinklers are pointed in such a way so the water shoots up and falls in this wide, rain-like pattern. And a flood flashlight coming down oh, the alley into the trolley, watching us all the way. I do apologize. But we're Now here's a somewhat drier section of old Mexico. You might recognize this from a John Landis movie, The Three Amigos, the black and white sequence at the very beginning of the movie. That was shot right here. And who remembers a movie with Jack Black called Nacho Libre? Yeah, yeah some of that was shot right here as well. Nacho! Thank you. All right. <laughs> I wonder where it was. On HBO, they had a great series called Westworld in the first season, the fifth episode. This was the town of Pariah. But Mexico is what we call it. It's right next to Texas. That's geographically correct, so we made a correct here on the back lot as well. This is our old west town known as Six Points, Texas. And this is the oldest part of the back lot, by which I mean this is the first part of the back lot where they shot movies. They were all westerns, of course. The western was the backbone of the industry during the silent era. These were all silent movies I'm talking about. And despite its age, the area is still in use today. Just a couple of years ago, a great movie came out called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a lot of big names involved. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, Leo, of course, Brad Pitt. And uh, they were concerned about security. So when they were here, all they could say was, they're making a movie over there. That was it. That was as far as we could go. They're making a movie over there. That was it. We're going to take it out of the second oldest part of the back lot. It is known as Little Europe. Well, it was known as Little Europe for many years. Right now, though, people know it as The Good Place. Here's the sign coming up on the right-hand side. So the first season of the show, uh, the first of four, was all about her trying to turn into a good soul so she could stay in The Good Place, right? And who wouldn't want to stay here? I mean, look at that sign, all chocolate, everything. To a lot of people, that's heaven. We built elements of this little Europe for silent movies that you may have heard of, like The Hunchback of Notre Dame and The Phantom of the Opera. Both of those starred the great Lon Chaney. Uh, we didn't finish the entire town, though, until 1929. And it was completed for a specific movie, a movie called All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, remember, those people don't get off, so wave, so wave at them very smartly. <laughs> This is the entrance of the blacksmith shop where Orlando Bloom worked. 
Go back to the original film, the very first one. Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow had escaped from all the red-coated soldiers. He was standing behind a statue up there in that nook. The soldiers ran by, he came down the steps, walked through those double doors, and met Orlando Bloom. They had the sword fight inside the blacksmith shop. So, Pirates of the Caribbean, the good place. Almost any other movie or TV show you can think of that needs a European location. We can now take you to the Middle East. Come on with me. <laughs> This was supposed to be Jerusalem for an Adam Sandler movie called The Don't Mess With The Zohan. There was a chase scene in there. He was being chased by the Israeli Secret Service. The camera was about where you are. And he came running through there, took off in that direction. A couple minutes later, the Israeli Secret Service coming right after him. The camera, though, stayed put. Did not go over there. We recreated a barge station here. Now, every little detail has to be accounted for. This is when you really find the small stuff. The shake you on. So look at everything. Wow. Down to the tracks we're driving on it. It is getting a little bumpy, so hold on to anything you don't want to fly out the window. But look at the you are here map, the ticket selling machines, the vending machines, these are the proper advertisements that have been placed on the wall. Everything just looks a certain way. There we go. Okay. The interiors don't fit in this house. <laughs> this was Susan's house on Desperate Housewives. In the 70s, it was the Hardy Boys' house. In the 80s, it was Bruce Stern's house in the movie The Burbs. In the 60s, it was Harry Morgan's house in Dragnet. So it's been around. It goes back to the 50s. It was in the uh, Rock Hudson movie, All That Heaven Allowed. Uh, it used to be wood siding, and uh, they turned it into stucco, but they painted it the exact same color. I am so fan girling right now. Mrs. Hooper's house. Oh my god. It's incredible.
Come on. Back home we go. Uh, the Green Mini Cooper was actually uh, Mr. Bean's car, Mr. Bean's holiday, but it gets used over and over and over again. Dominic Toretto's car, of course, the Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. They put them away for life. What's life in California? How's it going, Norman? Uh oh. oh <laughs> this is not going to look good on the upgrade. <laughs> oh, am actual G. Just like in the movies. So detailed. Mm. Purchased at an airplane graveyard that's in the desert. If you drive to Las Vegas, you might catch it in the corner of your eye. So, about 17 years ago now, uh, that cost $60,000. Then to cut it into pieces, put it on the back of trucks and bring it over here, that was another $200,000. <laughs> Every insurance company that makes commercials has done one here. Uh, that's, that's our apartment. So everything here is the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got Shannon Reed, Cheryl McCraney. Yeah. yeah, that's Line of Space from Back to the Future for you Back to the Future fans. That's this studio bit done. All good? Off the ride. <laughs> Got our ponchos on. Gonna get wet. Are no, we're on the
I love that. It's okay, sir. You're only snack size to the dinosaur. She's gonna go for bigger game. Don't worry about it. Now it's time for Transformers. <laughs> You guys are my navigators, so if anyone sees trouble... Uh-oh, that's trouble, all right. Watch out! Ah! It's Ravage! He's after the Allspark! Well, I thought that was a bit shit, that ride. What about you? Oh, I'm easily impressed. So I believe now it's our gourmet buffet. Yes, food. I'm interested. Kind of awesome. likes food, especially if it's free. This is our start to make no bones about it. <laughs> Scene partner. A, a scene partner. Come on, mm. give us a moment. Yeah. Action. Action. Oh, uh, you got it. Action. What do you get when you cross a snowman and a vampire? Frostbite. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it goes. Listen that. Frostbite. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Well, it looks like if this is your meal, you've picked out uh, every single one of the food groups. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've all been represented. I get, I get what I pay for, don't worry. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. This is either the beginning of the meal or the end. I don't know. It's the end, strangely enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, I hope you all enjoy your day. Thank you. Just, just when you think we've been everywhere, there's somewhere else. Honestly. Right, this is the scene where like, a nice quiet look. But they don't exactly look house trained. Hey, maybe I could adopt one. Duke, I love you, man, but you are barely house trained yourself. Man, you're making me hungry. Welcome 
to the secret lair of Captain Snowball. Although there are way more of these than I anticipated. All of them. Okay, good. <laughs> space we had to tear down a lot of stuff at one time we had a big concert performance venue called the universal amphitheater which sat about 3,000 people and uh, we tore that down so the castle now sits on the spot that was once occupied by the universal amphitheater absolutely incredible This is the forbidden Hogwarts journey thing ride. It's incredible. Connor's gonna so be sick. So much food. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you how much of an epic day I have had. It has been the best. we're making these conscious decisions to bring these dinosaurs into our world, that we take the responsibility that that brings with it. So, you know, some people laugh when we say we really don't want her to get scared or feel anxiety, but that's, we're really, really serious about that. We're doing Jurassic World again, or rather I'm dragging Connor back on it. <laughs> Multiple systems failing. It's off. Oh. <laughs> ah! oh, no, I avoided that. Going up now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Great time to get some nighttime shots. This is the evening's drawing in. <laughs> I think that's it, really. End of the day, everyone's leaving. The park closes in five minutes, so off we go. Bloody love a gift shop, me. It's all too expensive, though. Make your way to the main exit of the park. 
that's the end of uh, day two, Universal Studios, theme park. You very, good... very emotional, Pam. You had a good day? Incredible day. Incredible, Incredible day. day. Good. Yes. That's what I came for, this. Yeah, yesterday was my day and today was his day. Yeah. Tomorrow's my day as well, because we're off to Disneyland. Yeah, of course. The only thing is now we've got to go all the way back to our hotel. Oh, hi! Evening. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> I'm learning to swim. Are you? I'm in a big bath. You get your Frosties badges? Yeah. Nice. Not too late. <laughs> oh. He's doing it. He's doing it. What does that say over there? Three foot. Never mind. <laughs> Three metres, sorry. <laughs> what are you on about with you? Oh, he's off. He's learning to swim. Right. It's only three and a half metres deep, but he's learning. Right. <laughs> 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 That's quite scary to watch, I won't lie. <laughs>